so we are talking about radiation. Last time we, we went through the concepts of what it looks like for, uh, uh, for radiation, so say as a, as a function of wavelength, what radiation looks like for a black body. What we're going to talk about today is you, in a practical sense, need to know how much radiation is going from one surface to another surface. Right? That's what we care about um, in a heat transfer class. So we need to have a method to estimate, given the fact that some surface is emitting and absorbing radiation, we need to know how much radiation is going from one surface to another surface. So just um, so conceptually, we're saying, I have a surface. That surface can both absorb radiation, but it's also emitting radiation. It's both absorbing and emitting radiation. We need to know, uh, remember the, the relationship for radiation is uh, related to temperature to the fourth power. So we need to know, based on the temperatures of the surfaces involved, um, what the different heat flows are going to be. So absorbed radiation doesn't depend on temperature, but emitted radiation does depend on temperature. So if we look at actually how, let's maybe redraw this surface. Let's look at how a real surface is going to emit light. I'll do it a little smaller here. So we have a surface here. If you're uh, a, a molecule, an atom sitting on the surface of this object, and you release a photon, it is just as likely that you release it straight out as it is to any other angle. Right? So that's what we call a diffuse property. So if you picked a location, say here, you, you'd be likely to emit in any of these directions. The same thing goes for any of the other positions on this plate. So you have this, this kind of distribution that's coming off this plate that's kind of random in its, uh, random in its orientation of the, the photons leaving. So then the question is, if I have another surface out here um, that's, say, adjacent in space to this surface, the question is, how much of this radiation, this, this diffuse stuff here, how much of this actually makes it to this surface? Um, so this is actually, if you, if you look at the, the, the geometry of the problem, in many cases, you can estimate just based on the geometry how much light would be going under the assumption that it's a diffuse emission. Okay. Uh, so this, let's give some nomenclature here. We're going to say, we're going to start talking about heat transfer between two, two surfaces being from surface indexed I to surface indexed J. So let's call this surface uh, I over here, and this is surface J over here. And that way, when we get to like multi-surface problems, we can um, pretty easily handle um, you know, more than just two uh, different surfaces. OK, so we have these surfaces. Uh, let's define this idea of something called a view factor. So a view factor um, is given the nomenclature f from i comma j, f from i to j. It's the view, uh, the geometric view that i surface i has of surface j. Another way of saying that is if I have an emitting surface, it's the fraction of light that's going from surface i to surface j. So we define that, I guess, um, in words as saying this is in the numerator, radiation leaving uh, surface I. Um, that goes directly to surface J. Okay, That's all divided by the total radiation leaving I. Right? That makes sense. You just you, you emit some amount of radiation, a fraction of that goes to J. That's just what this is saying. Um, so how do, we, uh, how do we evaluate the view factor? We need maybe some techniques or rules that we can use to help us evaluate this fraction. Um, and it turns out there's actually like a family of strategies that we can use. So we will go through and talk about each of the different examples in, the, in this, um, say, list. But I'll just tell you now kind of what they are. Um, so we'll go through and kind of check these off. So let me just make a list over here. So number one would be inspection. Um, I'll t again, I'll talk about what, what each of these are 
Inspection is maybe obvious. It's like you look at it and you can just by seeing it, you can, you can tell what that number is. Um, two would be a library. And I don't mean like Memorial Library. I mean a library that you can go to and uh, look up the, uh, some function that will tell you. Um, three is uh, something called a view factor integral. This is one that we're actually, it's, it's a pretty difficult method. So we're not in this class going to cover it. I'll just tell you what it is. And then if you want to take like a 700 radiation, uh, 700 level radiation course, you might talk about it there. Um, but you'll know that it exists at least. Uh, four are what we call view factor rules. So these are like, I don't know, heuristics or rules of thumb that are just true. Um, that you can apply. Five is something called the method of, of crossed and uncrossed strings. Okay, we'll talk about that. And then six is Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo as in like uh, random roll of the dice type technique. Okay, so let's, let's go through each of these uh, in uh, roughly this order. And we'll start by going through inspection. Um, so for inspection, again, what, what inspection generally is, is saying if I look at the geometry, it is obvious from the geometry what the view factor has to be. So what would be an example of this? I guess let's say we've got some surface and it's a circle. And that circle is contained inside another like duct or something. It's another circle. Uh, if you look at this surface, let's call this one, um, this is surface one in here. This is surface two. So it's, think of it like it's a, a, a cylinder embedded inside another cylinder and they're infinitely long. What would be the view factor from one to two? One, right? All the light emitted from one has to go to two. Why? Because, well, it can't hit itself. It's, it's curved, so light emitted is not going to hit itself. So all light that's emitted from one has to be absorbed by two. So here we would say by inspection, um, F1, two is equal to one. What about the other way around? So what, could we say by inspection what F2, one is? I see no. Think about why. Because it would hit itself. It, would hit it. it could hit itself. So a, a photon emitted here could either hit itself or it could hit one. And without knowing more about the geometry, we can't decide what that fraction would be. OK, so you have to be like, kind of careful that as you're going through it, you don't, let your, you, know, you don't become mentally lazy and just sort of think, OK, well, f12 is one, therefore the, other, the opposite has to be true. It's not, right? So, by inspection, that's that's one example. I guess there's other there's other examples, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, just to make sure, when we're talking about like one surface, the surface, not both. Can you clarify what you mean? Like um, the surface that's facing one as opposed to the surface that's facing away from one. Oh yeah, so yeah, this is um, a point of confusion sometimes. So we are talking about the outer facing surface of one and the inner facing surface of two. Um, Sometimes that is maybe implied in the way the problem is stated, but is, if, if it's not obvious, you can always ask. But yeah, so the view factor on the internal surface of two, just assume this is like a body out here. There's a body in here, and we're only talking about the void in between them. OK, so that's inspection. I, you'll, as we go through examples, I think you'll see more of those. Um, let's see, you know, another thing might be like, uh, let's say you have you have a plate that's like this, and it's infinitely long here, uh, or, or sufficiently long, and then you have another plate that's like this, and it's sufficiently long in this direction. Um, as long as the lengths are, you know, one is twice the length of the other, it's like a 50% view factor from, from surface you know, one to surface two. Right, so that would be like another, another example. Um, but typically, they, they are sort of self-evident, or at least through logic, you can get to them. OK, that's enough on that. So the second thing would be libraries. Let's look at in ease. There's a, 
there's an example. There's also, um, you can just look up like view factor libraries. This is one, um, University of Houston, I think, uh, somebody there compiled a list and put it here. Most of these have been programmed into ease for you. Um, so I'd say like if, in terms of view factor catalogs, ease is about as complete as is out there. So let's look at that for a second. So here in ease, what you do is again, go to the function info uh, dialog, and then under heat transfer fluid flow, there should be a uh, radiation view factors option. And then you can just toggle through all the different geometries. Um, one thing that I like to do is just look at the index because that will list everything. So if you go in the index, <laughs> first you see there's a lot. Um, so these are all the two dimensional ones. Uh, you have, okay, plate to plate, uh, plates at an angle. You have cylinders to shells, cylinder, cylinder to cylinder. You have arrays of cylinders. You have three surface problems and so on, right? There's, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, these are all, again, two-dimensional. So you assume out of the page is infinite. Uh, if you want a three-dimensional, there's also a, a library of those. Let's see, that's this one. So, so you, you look at this and you think, OK, I, my bases are covered, right? It's, uh, somehow it always seems like the one you really want is not in here, but I don't know. Um, so there's a lot here. Let's see, it goes down about another page, but there's a lot of stuff. So you should be able to find what you, what you want here. Um, so a lot of these like cylindrical geometries and, and things are, are um, derived analytically. So there's actually like analytical expressions for a lot of these that are, that are programmed in. A lot of the cases where say you have like these polygonal shapes that are planar to each other, or, or the shape itself is planar, and then it's a relation between two shapes in space. You can see that there's specific examples of that. Um, recently, actually, since the last time I taught this class, we had a student who figured out how to do any polygonal shape in any orientation in space and have a view factor for that. So like all the algorithms that exist here for these, you know, between two planes, those are sort of covered actually by this one up here. So F3D poly, will cover a lot, of the, a lot of the situations that you want. But if you want to go back and use like a, um, one of these, say, older methods, you can, you can do that too. How many arguments does that take? <laughs> this one? Yeah. Uh, well, you need, to give it, you need to give it the vertices. So you have to have a give, give it a list of vertices. Actually, there's a, show you the example of it. Um, so it takes as arguments um, for the A polygon the x, y, and z coordinates in space for the b polygon, x, y, and z coordinates. And the, the coordinates are just a list, right? It's a list of the points. And then it'll give you back f, a to b, f, b to a, uh, and then the area of both the polygons. So uh, Jacob, believe it or not, was an undergrad who came through and did this <laughs> as part of a research project. But it's all based on this, this paper here. So you just sort of interpreted what was, what was here. But, um, so that's kind of a um, more recent thing. Um, if you find a bug in it, let me know. We'll fix it. OK, any questions, other questions on that? So that's, that's the library stuff. Um, I guess I won't talk too much more about it other than you know, generally what you're trying to do is you go through, you pick it out, you look, at, look carefully at the geometry. You know, it's going to tell you you need to give me an R, an A, a B, uh, and then, or here it's not even asking for, for R, but it, you give it these arguments and it'll give you back the view factor. Um, and it'll tell you in the definition of the view factor which one it's giving you. Okay. So back here, uh, that's the libraries. Um, I said I would talk about this integral. So I'll just, on the integral, um, the idea for the integral is that if you have two elements or two, two um, surfaces that are at some angle to each other and, and separated in space, you can write an integral that involves the uh, angle of this, um, uh, so, sorry, the angle from the normal of the first surface to the vector connecting these, so that's theta i, and then there's an angle from the normal of the second surface to that same vector, and we call that theta j. 
Uh, and then if you give it um, those, those angles and you assume that these elements are basically differentially small so that the view factor from like this corner to the surface is essentially the same as the view factor from this corner to the surface. If you make all those assumptions, then you can write this integral. And it looks like this. Um, we'd say A, the area of surface I, times F from I to J, that's the view factor from I to J, is equal to uh, A J F J I. Well, that's actually called reciprocity. I'll come back to that one in just a second. That's all, both of those are equal to this integral, which is a double integral. Um, first, we integrate over area I, then we integrate over area J, and we're looking at cosine of theta I times cosine of theta J divided by pi R squared DAI DAJ. Okay. That's the integral. So all it's, it's telling you is that, yeah, you have these angles. R is the distance between the, the differential elements, right, this distance here. So somehow you have to come up with this um, computation of uh, the area integral for this. So it's actually more to it than what we've just written here. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. But that, that's, that exists, and you can do it.